All right. Good evening, guys. Good to see everyone here this evening. Making worship a lifestyle. So I, I declare this evening, my aim is to glorify God uh, through everything that I would say here this evening. Um, so Arden called me and asked me to, to speak on this one worship. And so the first thing we want to do is identify worship. Um, I have a Bible that has um, words identified, uh, word wealth it's called. And, and so that's where I got my, my uh, definitions. The first one is from Psalms 99.5, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. <clears throat> to bow down, to bow down before someone as an act of submission or reverence. Worship. And the second uh, definition I got from Revelations uh, 4, 10 and 11. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. And so from that, that word worship is to prostrate oneself, to bow down, show reverence, worship, adore. All believers have one dimensional worship to only one Lord and Savior. We do not worship angels, saints, shrines, relics, or religious personages. We worship one, the one true living God. All right. So what what worship is uh, and you guys know this I'm, sh I'm sharing from my experience tonight I'm going to share about how I worship and not about you know I'm not teaching out of some book <coughs> it's just what I experience for worship so so worship is it's private and it's corporate um, and I, I how I worship at home, I have, we have a little Bose speaker. I have a little Bose speaker on my desk. I get my phone out and I got about, I just looked tonight, I got about 50 songs in there that, in my video player that I can choose from. And so I just, I, I worship there in the morning. I'm like Janie, I get up early. Uh, <laughs> and so I spend, I spend two, three hours, probably three hours most mornings. Uh, it worship, prayer worship in the Word. But it's His presence, just as we were worshiping here, His presence was just powerful. And it's, that's, that's where it has to come from our heart, um, our worship. So private and corporate. And then, um, you know, the Word says we worship in spirit and in truth. And we're ministering. We're also ministering on, onto the Lord. I was out at IHOP once and, and I felt like in Ezekiel there's a verse that says, uh, talks about ministering, priests ministering unto the Lord. So we're not, I, I'm not saying we're all called to spend that much time, you know, with the Lord, but I'm at a place where I can. I'm retired. I, I can do that now. And, and, and so it is. It's a, it's a joy to minister uh, to the Lord that way, to spend time with Him. Um, so, obedience, uh, I, I submit that obedience is a really great form of worship. He's asking you to do something, uh, to do it. Uh, here's, another, here's another big thing. Don't just listen to worship music. Declare. And I, I found that out, uh, probably, I don't know. 15, 20 years ago, I'd, I'd drive, I would drive an hour, an hour and a half to work. Uh, one way I worked in uh, construction, so it was always different towns and moving around. And 
uh, I'd have worship music going, but it seemed like the enemy was still bugging me, you know, uh, with thoughts or whatever. It was, so I'm like, well, I got worship music. How, what's, how can he be here? Well, I found out he doesn't care. He, he can listen to worship music. He doesn't bother. But when you declare it, when it comes out of your mouth, that's when he doesn't like it. That's when he leaves. He flees. Uh, I found that. And it's, that's true with, with any word. You know, I believe he knows, the, the devil knows the scripture better than most of us. But when we declare it out of our mouth and out of our heart, that's when it's, it's powerful. Uh, communion is a, I, I believe, is a form of worship. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have share communion here together, and and I when we do that, I'll just share some uh, some more thoughts on that. But I, I started doing that I don't know some time ago, just personal communion in the morning, and it's there's something really powerful uh, about that about doing that. We don't have to you know always have it corporately. We can do it, and I encourage you to do that to do that um, individually. By yourself. Lois and I do it together. But there's times you just need to do it by yourself. And, um, yeah, I put down here, fruit of the Spirit. Um, the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. It's, I think God wants us to enjoy worshiping Him. And so, like, you know, tonight. It was a joy just to be in His presence, just to worship Him. Um, so I'm going to share here, um, I think what got me up here, because I shared with uh, Arden and, and the breakfast team that we meet with um, New Year's uh, this past year. I usually ask them for a word for something and, uh, this year, I was just really having a great, more of a hunger. I, I, I just kept saying, I want to encounter you. What, what do you want for me this year? And, and so what word and what, what's my assignment for this year? And so <clears throat> I, I got the word. The word was sacrifice. And that's from Romans 12, 1 and 2. You know, as we surrender, we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, which is pure worship. That's, I think New King James Version talks about worship. Some of them don't say worship. Uh, but anyways, that, that one does. So it's that part of sacrificing, surrendering. And one morning he told me, I started seeing David's tent. Go to David's tent and you will receive your assignment there. Well, David's tent, probably most of you know, it's down in D.C. Um, and it, it's been going on 24-7 for, um, I don't know how many, 2,000 days, however many years that is. I just heard him saying 2,000 days uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's, it's, you know, David had a tent behind his palace, and they worshiped 24-7. He, he had it for 33 years. This was going on. But we have it in Washington, D.C. Um, and so anyways, it was like, I, this was probably around the fourth or fifth of this year. And uh, it was like, whoa, I don't know why I want to go to Washington, D.C. now. You know, things are <laughs> a little crazy down there. But I was, okay, when? When do you want me to go? I don't know if it was wait a couple months or you want me to go now? January? Um, one day I walked into the into my bedroom and the digital clock said 111. And it just popped out at me and I said, what is it? And I felt like it said, that's your date. 111. So, okay. So I told Lois and uh, she got on the computer and started looking for a hotel. We found a hotel down there, uh, right downtown, and uh, made her reservations to go. 
Well, you know how the enemy wants to bring fear. Fear is one of his greatest weapons. So somebody sent us a link. You know, all these links were on Facebook about all the stuff that was going to happen. Well, this, this one link was going to be a lockdown. It's going to be a military lockdown. And uh, this guy was saying, you need to have two weeks of uh, food and water in your house. And we're listening to this going down. I'm like, <laughs> I'd just turn around right now if we didn't have reservations. <laughs> Could, we're going to drive down there and get stuck down there in a lockdown. And, uh, but we kept going. And we got down to our hotel. And the crazy thing was, it was all boarded up. Five went over all the, you know, to the first floor. Five went over the, the sign out said they were open. So we went in and... It was, uh, yeah. We went down on Sunday afternoon. That was the 11th, 10th. We went down, and, and uh, David's tent was like a half a mile. We could walk through the city, but going through the city a half a mile doesn't seem very far. Uh, so we walked over that evening, and um, uh, if I recall right, I think we, were, we heard they were singing in their Days of Elijah. You know, Ezekiel, dry bones come alive. Um, I didn't really hear anything that evening, so we came back to the hotel. Well, uh, let me say this yet. People were praying. We asked for prayer when we went down there. The, we have a Wednesday morning men's prayer team there at church, and uh, they were praying, and the one guy said, he said, I, I see when we were praying, I seen angels. More than one angel, mighty warrior angels going with you guys, leading the way. So, and we felt that. We felt that going down. They just opened, traffic opened up. I mean, every, everything just, it was all, it was powerful that way. Um, at, our, at our hotel, we, we uh, it was a beautiful room. Uh, right away, so we went in, we cleansed it. Um, which is important to do when you go to a place you don't know what happened there before. <clears throat> and so we, we had a good night, slept good. Uh, the next day we walked over, back over. Well, I said that morning, she thought, you may not get your word till 111. <laughs> so like, okay. So anyways, we're in there worshiping in the morning <coughs> and, and um, Surprised me because I, I think of a, a tent, a prayer tent, you know, because I'm a prayer person. I, I, I didn't really get the, as much of it as worship, but it's all worship. They, you, they even says in there, you can pray short prayers, but it's, it's all worship, keep the worship going. And, uh, but we met this, we met a lady, uh, we were praying also for divine encounters. And so we met this lady, uh, Nancy Nabellick, from Texas. Um, really, really sweet lady. 84 years old. She's been there five years. Her shift is five in the morning to 11. Um, she said she blows the shofar and plays the piano. Uh, it, she was an amazing lady. We, we probably spent a half hour with her. Uh, Talking about worship and things. Um, we, we went back to the hotel and had some lunch, and so we walked back over again. So we got to be there at 111. So anyway, and it was, believe it or not, 111. Um, when God gave me um, my assignment. And my assignment for 2021 is to worship. So I was always into prayer. And he said worship. More into prayer, put it that way. Anyways, here's what I heard. Make me number one. Not hunting, not your lawn, not your home, not your ministry, or anything else. Make me number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Period. 
worship me above all else. And so, um, we love to. Okay, okay. Did you want to tell them about all of the National Guard? Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Because, you know, of the election stuff going on, they were afraid there were going to be riots. Uh, when we walked back and forth, we saw more police than we saw pedestrians. And that's the truth. They were sitting in cars, just sitting. They, they, it was, that was a little, you know, odd. But yeah, when I went down in the morning, I went down the, to the lobby at the hotel to get coffee. Wow, I, I couldn't believe it. There was hundreds of National Guard. So I'm like, why is the place boarded up? We got in the National Guard here. Why is it boarded up? So I kept asking them. Finally, I got it out of one guy. It's because they're there. They're afraid the rioters would try to attack the National Guard. I mean, what's it? <laughs> I was blown away by that. You know, but anyways, that's, that's what... And while we would walk over there to David's tent, we'd go past um, the National Mall there where the tent used to be, and they, made, they told them to move. And they were setting up fence. Now, if you've ever been down there to the mall, they were setting fence that were fencing that whole thing there for, for Biden's inauguration. But it was all, it was, they were setting that fence up. But that was dangerous, sort of in the the angels guarding us? Oh, the National Guard, yes. <laughs> okay, thanks. But yeah, in the spiritual we see, like the National Guard were guarding us. In the spiritual, that's how the angels, you know, were surrounding us and guarding us. So we had nothing to fear. And we didn't, we felt no fear when we were there. This, this is more my testimony than talking about worship, but I guess it's part of, you know, <clears throat> what we go through. But So, um, probably three weeks ago, um, I went to bed one evening, like, as normal. Um, and I got awake in the middle of the night. Probably, it was 2.30, and I'd go, I went to the bathroom. Well, I was sort of staggering around when I went. Man, until I got trying to come back from the bathroom, I was on the floor. I was throwing up. I mean, I was deathly sick. I, I, I didn't know what was going on. So finally, Lois said, you must have vertigo. I don't know. I was sick. Everything, you know, was spinning, rocking, and I, <laughs> it was, it was terrible. She says, I'm calling the ambulance. I said, you're not calling the ambulance. I'll crawl out to the car and <laughs> you can take me up. But I couldn't, I couldn't go, I couldn't. So there I am. Uh, so she called the ambulance. They came. I, I was glad she did them because they gave me medicine for nausea and for dizziness. And that helped that, that I couldn't, but I couldn't open my eyes. I, I had my eyes shut. So they took, I got up there and whatever they had, They'll check me out in a minute of me. So I'm there in the hospital in the bed uh, the next day and there's no visitors. Um, and I they had on the thing bed rest, so they don't even they don't even come in your room in your own bed rest. I mean I I was but I slept I was afraid I couldn't sleep at night, I slept the whole day. Anyways, during the day well, everything they gave me, I threw up. But anyways, during the day, my arm here hurt. Oh, I had pain in my arm. I couldn't figure it out. So I said, God, what, what is this? What's going on? And I, I felt like he said, the enemy sucker punched you. And 
just like that, the pain went away and it never, that was the last, because it was exposed, what he did. Um, and so I had, I couldn't get my balance, I just, whatever they gave me did not help, I just couldn't get, yeah, I came home the, the second day, um, and so in the mornings, you know, my, I just, you know, be worshiping, whatever, but just asking God, what's, what's going on with this whole thing, um, with the balance? And one thing he said was, we're in a battle. And, and, the, and then he showed me a, uni, a unicycle. So I, uh, I got this here together to sort of help you see the different choices we have. Um, we can ride we ride a regular bicycle, ain't too hard to balance. And we're, what we're doing is balancing our flesh and our spirit, is what he was teaching me on that. So you can ride, you know, a unicycle, representing the spirit. It's really hard to balance. But that's what he wants us to ride. He wants us to be in the spirit. Or we can ride this, this is called a penny farthing. It was back in 1870, 1880. And then they made the regular. The reg but this here, uh, I like this because this, this is more like where we should be. More in the spirit than in the flesh. So my, just my, my uh, I guess, challenge to you is tonight, which one are you riding? And actually, this in here, you could say, well, if you're not a believer, you might say you're all flesh. A little bit of spirit. But that's... I see that a little bit more like... We're in the world. We're flesh. So we're, we have a little bit of that. So maybe that's the blast that we're, uh, we're riding. I'll share this one last thing yet. Uh, about one... What, really hinders worship, I believe, is idols. I used to, uh, this is about 20 years ago, uh, we, we changed churches. Uh, and I was sitting in, this, sitting in church and, and I heard very clearly, your work you're not worshiping me, you have an idol. And I've done me, I start arguing. I don't have it, God. You're my, I'm, you're first. I don't have any idols. <laughs> you can't win with God. Uh, I argued a little bit and uh, um, he showed me that the steel or Pittsburgh Steelers were my idol. And everybody at work knew that. I mean, I, I love the Pittsburgh Steel. <laughs> I love football. And so I, I had to. It took me three, four years to get that out of me because it was, it was a stronghold in my life. Uh, it really was. I, and so an idol. Missy, <laughs> I don't know how well you know her, but she's, she's tenacious. If she senses, she's like a, a narcotics dog. If she senses <laughs> there's anything in you, she's coming after you. <laughs> so I'm in the, Lois and I are in, in a small group that Missy did. So this was, this was after I had the bird, while I was still fighting the birdie going. And, um, She's like, she kept hounding me. Mark, there's something, something going on with you. What is it? What is it? I said, I don't know. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so after a couple of things, finally she said, there's something weighing you down. What is it? 
Ask the Holy Spirit. So I asked him, and, and right away as I seen, I just broke down crying. It was, I, I, I felt like God, I know God gave me an assignment to pray for President Trump. And I prayed for him every day for the whole time he was in office and, and prayed. And, and the enemy is very subtle. Somehow this, this came, I allowed it to become an idol. I was trusting President Trump was going to win again. He was going to save America. More than what I had faith to believe God was going to do this. So, far. so thanks, Missy, for getting that out of me. <laughs> that God showed me the next morning that was an idol. I uh, had that. Thank you for <laughs> listening to my. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, let's. We're going to go into communion. I have a I have a devotional uh, declaring God's word. Derek Prince wrote it, and he has a couple of excellent devotionals on the blood of Jesus and. Uh, taking communion. So, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal, John 6, 54 and 56. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, true food, and my blood is drink indeed, true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. And it, it just, I'm just really getting it. The life is in the blood. In Leviticus, God told the, the Israelites they weren't allowed to eat any meat with blood in it. You know, they had to drain all the blood out of them, any meat they ate, because the life is in the blood. So when we take communion tonight, you know, we're eating Jesus' flesh, we're drinking his blood. The life. We want His... We want... I want Jesus' life in me. It's part of taking communion. To get that life. To get that life. And it's it's continually. It says, He who drinks. So it's a continually thing. We continually eat His flesh, drink His blood, and we continually have His life in us. So, uh, if I think probably the easiest way, if you guys would just come up and get it, uh, and then we'll take it together. So you can come up. Uh,
Paul quoted Jesus in 1 Corinthians 11.25 saying, This do as often as you drink it, remember me. Um, and so let us, let us eat his flesh. Father, I pray right now for each one of us as we do this in unity, as we partake of your blood, Jesus, that you would impart to us your life. Just make it new and meaningful this evening. This, the life, your life that is in your blood as we partake. Let us drink the blood of Jesus. Thursday morning and share what God was doing inside of us and as we talked about tonight I just want to kind of tie it together and, and see it on both sides one as we are involved in freedom ministry I break it down scheduled appointments and non-scheduled appointments so you can say we have responsibility because we know that we're preparing to meet with folks that you know, our heart is right, and, and we have a heart and an attitude of worship as we prepare to meet with people and, and help lead them into freedom in Jesus Christ. But I also believe we have just as great a responsibility to have a lifestyle of worship that Mark talked about because every day of the week we have opportunities and God has appointments set up. They may not be in our freedom calendar. They may not be on the books may not be an official session, but we talk about it all the time. In your daily life, whether it's at work, whether it's at the store, maybe it's some place you volunteer, maybe it's somebody that rents from you, maybe it's somebody you buy stuff from, you're in business with, or maybe it's a customer. You just have no idea what opportunities we have, and more and more I say to myself, man, God, I want my heart to be in a place of worship that I don't miss those opportunities. I Man, if our minds on everything else, I, I look back and I don't know about you guys, but my short life, I'm not quite as old as some of you, Gene, but I look, yeah, yeah. I look, <laughs> I look, I look back and I say, God, what did I miss? And I, and I believe he just brings opportunities back around for us. But God, what did I miss? And the more that my heart if we listen to what Mark shared, the more that my heart, the more that your heart, that we're in tune, that we're living that lifestyle, we're not going to miss those opportunities. And then as we lead people, the second part, as we lead people in freedom sessions, regardless of what it looks like, we want them not only to see a lifestyle of worship in our life, but then to begin, if they're not, living that lifestyle of worship that the very stuff that they fought through does not come back around and knock them back down again. I want, I want you to take a minute tonight as we close, I want you to think back through some of the folks that you have been blessed to minister to and minister with. If you would, just shut your eyes for a minute. And I want you to think back. Think of some names. I want you to think of some faces. 
I want you to think of some different opportunities. Maybe it was an inner healing session. Maybe it was a weekend that you were part of. Maybe it was someone that you were leading through seven steps. Maybe they were in the deliverance room. Maybe you were tearing down strongholds. They were tearing down strongholds. And I want you to get a picture of some of the people that you've been fighting with. You've been fighting, you know, in some ways on their behalf, interceding with, battling for. And I want you to begin to picture some of the people that are really living out that freedom living out that walk, and then I also want you to picture some folks that your heart just breaks for because, as Ted would say, they got pulled into the ditch. Maybe they've been avoiding your call for a couple weeks or a couple months. Maybe they can't make eye contact with you when you see them because they came up against that deep, that hurt, that painful thing in their life and they just weren't able to push through it for one reason or another. say, Arden, why, why, why are you having us thinking about that? I, I want to encourage you that the folks that understand, that gain that revelation of a lifestyle and an attitude of worship, I submit to you, most times stay on that journey. And so many times, the ones that get pulled in the ditch, don't grab a hold of that lifestyle of worship. So I want to encourage you as we're working with people, whether we're on a weekend or whether in an inner healing session or, or whatever it is, as we are ministering God's love, freedom to them, let's not miss the opportunity to encourage them about the lifestyle that brings freedom. Does that make sense? There's a lifestyle. There, there's a lot of times a lot of choices that we can make on our path. And man, I'm so grateful for God's grace. For when we don't make those and we have to close those doors and we push back in and, and we say, all right, God. But our lifestyle, our attitude, if we listen to what Mark, who, by the way, I just think the world of, I love this guy. Does anybody else love this guy? I just yeah. love this guy. Yeah. This shares his heart. Exactly. <laughs> Did that man get his pie since he got out of the hospital? That's the question I have for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mark, I may have to bring a pile over to Senator County. I believe there's a problem in this household. All right. Does anybody want to meet with them later on tonight to satisfy the pocket? As Mark shares his heart, and I just begin to think, man, if we open our hearts and we say, yes, God, I want to worship you. I want to, I want to set aside time in my life. Man, it changes things. I close with this, and then I'll pray, Janie, unless you have. I, I do. I, I think what, um, the one thing I want to add is when I, standing back here when we were um, worshiping, and then it just was what Mark said, when we were praising God, hmm. you could feel the thanksgiving, you could feel the thank you, God, for who you are and what you've done, and then we switched into that place of worship. And what really resonated with me is a place of surrender. Mm. And so the lifestyle of worship is a lifestyle of surrendering to God, our whole being, mm. every day, and everything we do. I, I mean, I say in my chair, I watch people fall their knees. Mm. You know, and I watch their hands go up and their heads go down in worship, just truly honoring the Lord. So, um, yeah, so it's that surrender, it's that obedience that, that Mark talked about is so much part of the lifestyle of we walk in. Amen. I'll share a quick testimony with you, and then we'll pray. <coughs> I had the opportunity to talk to somebody on Sunday morning, and they shared with me about some changes that God was bringing in their life, and opportunities to serve and minister, and different things. And several months ago, they were serving, and uh, they said, I, "I don't know if I can do this. You know, it just, I just don't have time. You know, the, the morning, the routine." And, and, family and everything we had there's just there's no way so I don't want to commit maybe I'll show up maybe once a month once every other month you know just I like what's going on but there's just no way over the next weeks and months as I as I watched this person was there like almost every time there was an opportunity this person was there well, that's intriguing and they were passionate and they were just I mean they were on fire and then just last week I was able to encourage that person and, and hand something off to them and they just had this incredible smile on their face and they said you know 
I know God called me to this. I said, well, how do you know that? And they said, because I just have time for it. You know, I know that Jesus is in it. I, I just, I have time for it. It doesn't interfere. And it just, it resonated in my heart as we talk about worship tonight. And, you know, Mark talked about setting aside time. And all of us, you know, we're at different places. And listen, it's not a magic minute or moment or hour or anything like that. But I, I just want to encourage you tonight. There will be time for it. If you think, man, I want to I have that heart of worship. I want to have that attitude of worship. You be intentional. We'll be time for it. God, I thank you so much for tonight. I thank you for the encouragement. I thank you for the word about worship. I thank you for the word about lifestyle. I thank you for Mark being vulnerable and sharing his testimony, sharing about the things that need to come out of us. And God, we all have those things in our life that you pull out, that there's more room for you. So God, I just cry out tonight for any one of us, if there's any idols in our life, the Holy Spirit, just reveal them to us. Even right now in this time of prayer, if there's just anything that stands in our life that stands in the way of communion with you, God, that stands in the way of surrendering and submitting and sacrificing. Holy Spirit, we just give you permission. And, and I, guys, if you're with me tonight, just I encourage you just to say that. Holy Spirit, I give you permission. Say it out loud. Holy Spirit, I give you permission. Just reveal anything. Anything in our lives. Just pull up those things. God, we want to surrender those things to you. God, we don't want things in the way of our worship, in the way of our relationship with you, God. So we cry out for those things. And God, I just, oh, I just declare lifestyles of worship. Mm. Each one of us just continue to commit that, uh, the word just comes to my mind, Father, just that intimacy, that intimate relationship with you, God, that one-on-one time when you, you speak to us, God, we cry out for your voice, your sweet voice. These times with you, God, it changes everything. So, God, we surrender tonight. As we walk towards an intimate relationship and a lifestyle of worship. In Jesus' name. Amen.